Today's video is sponsored by me. <laughs> <clears throat> I just recently released my newest single, Water Level. Click the link in the description below to go listen to it on your favorite streaming platform. Okay, so you're a music producer looking to spice up your drum loops from sounding like to sounding something like If you're not, you're in good hands because today I'm gonna walk you through seven tips and tricks to producing better sounding drums in Ableton Live. Let's start with tip number one, samples. A man is only as good as his tools. Emmert Wolf, known audio file maybe. <laughs> Look, I don't think I need to explain in depth that if you start with lower quality samples, it will only take you so far. I genuinely encourage you take the time to scour the internet for unique samples or even better, go out in the world with a microphone and a dream and make your own. You're a music producer trying to have yummy uh, granola with your yogurt in the morning? Wrong, you're an audio engineer with a sick shaker sample. I guess you can be both, huh? Hmm. All I'm saying is imagine if every single song in the world was made with Ableton's baked in 808 core kit. My personal favorite go-to resource is Splice Sounds, and no, they're not sponsoring this video, but if you'd like, there is a link in the description to take you there if you wanna check it out for yourself. And I recognize tip number one is already a bit of a cop-out. So here's a bonus tip 1.5 on the house. It's on me, no worries, I got you. Ableton's drum rack. Create a new MIDI track for one layer of percussion. Let's say your kicks. Assign a drum rack, drag and drop just way too many samples. Now create a MIDI clip and make sure you turn on this headphone icon. Now, insert and move around any MIDI notes. I know, right? Now you're able to hear your samples and be able to more easily envision the drum loop as you're creating it. Tip number two, transients. In music production, transients are a <clears throat> high amplitude, short duration sound at the beginning of a waveform. Oh okay, so in this case, this is the large spike in the audio waveform you see at the beginning of most drum samples. This is the crack of a snare or the click of a drum you hear before the audio slowly decays into silence. And as a result, transients usually provide punchiness to your mix. One fun thing you can consider doing is whenever you're stacking drum samples, instead of just mindlessly lining them up to hit at the exact same time like a dum-dum, maybe offset your drum samples by a teeny tiny bit. This emphasizes the transient on one sample, bringing some punchiness, but then introduces another on top of that sound shortly after. It's a minor tweak, but it can add a little bit of character. Tip number three, velocity. Velocity in this case is synonymous with the volume of your sample. And having 100% of your drum samples play at the exact same velocity is a surefire way to create a bland, stale beat. Adding variety to the velocity of samples that are playing inevitably creates a feeling of authenticity, as if a human was playing these sounds and not just a crummy, worn down MacBook. Use different velocity settings to softly stack samples on top of each other or to create dynamic sounding rolls and trills. In Ableton Live, you can change the velocity of any MIDI note by moving these vertical lines beneath the piano roll. Though admittedly, this can get a bit crowded if we have too much going on at once. So I prefer the alternative of holding down command clicking on a note and dragging up or down. Keep in mind in Ableton, the velocity ranges from one all the way up to 127. Tip number four, panning. Panning is the process of positioning your sounds in a stereo context, moving from the center to the left and or right channels of your mix. What if your drums felt like they were sitting immediately on your left and right ears, rather than sitting in the middle of your head? One thing to consider is having different layers sit at slightly different stereo settings. There are plenty of diagrams and charts out there you can reference that tell you where exactly your drums have to sit in a stereo context. And sure, you can follow along with those if you'd like, but at the end of 
the day, just play around with this and find what you like. But taking this one step further, what I like to do is automate the panning so that the sound is constantly shifting. I love doing this to my hi-hats. So when the fundamental beat is playing and there's a sturdy foundation in the middle of the mix, in the meantime, my hi-hats feel like they're dancing around your head. Overall, this adds width to your entire mix. Tip number five, reverb and delay. Reverb is the process of emulating sound, reflecting off surfaces. And delay is the concept of taking, taking a, sound a sound and repeating it. And you can take one or both of these audio effects to your drum samples to add significant amount of life. Picture how exciting it would be to take your shakers and instead of just playing a dull, flat, repetitive sound, it now feels as though it's floating on a little cloud. Be warned though, since as I'm phrasing this to be working with all drums, that you probably wouldn't want to put these audio effects on low frequency samples, such as kicks and toms, or else inevitably this will lead to muddiness. Tip number six, pitch shift, and ooh, bonus points, pitch shift automation. Taking your samples and pitching them up and down is a great way to add uniqueness. If you're using someone else's sample, this is a good start down the path of making your own sound rather than just copy and pasting. This can also provide a little bit of melodics if you believe in having your samples match the key of the rest of your song. However, the meat of this tip I'd like to emphasize is adding some pitch shift automation to your layer. An example, I've created a MIDI layer dedicated purely to hi-hats. In Ableton, if I click on this icon in the bottom left corner, I can now access the envelope property window of my entire MIDI clip. From here, I can access plenty of exciting information, but one I'd like to call out is under this tab. If we were to select MIDI control and then the drop down below it, select pitch bend, we can modify the pitch of our MIDI clip as a whole. From here, you can add in some automation, say at the end of a bar when my hi-hats are rolling. And then all of a sudden, I have a unique and interesting sound I would have otherwise not included in my mix. And lastly, tip number seven is one of my favorites, reverse samples. Moving away from MIDI and instead towards an audio track, one thing I love to do is add in an audio sample that's playing on another layer. Say for example, this kick. From here, you can double click on the sample and click the button that says REV to reverse the sound. Zoom in and line the sample up so it ends right as the equivalent sample on the other layer starts playing. Consider adjusting the fade ins and outs, the volume, the timing, etc. But ultimately what this leads to is an ever so slight buildup of sorts to the other sample. If you're strategic about where this is placed, this can be used to fill in gaps and emphasize particular moments of your track and overall lead to a more dynamic and flowing rhythm. And there you have it. Those are my seven-ish tips and tricks I like to use when producing drums to keep things exciting. I use some of these tips and tricks in my newest single, Water Level, which you all know, you can click the link in the description below to go check it out. Listen to it on your favorite streaming platform. Otherwise, be free to go produce, be merry, maybe consider sending me demos of what you've made on my social media. That's, that's always fun. Anyways, hope you all take care, have a good one, and you know what? I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.